And even though you're working more, what is that mental state between where you were then and where you are now? When, when I was still there and thinking, this is the plan, I believed it would be okay. Um, where I am now is kind of just like, you know, in the Bible where it says, if you ask and do things in faith, I will give you so much. You can't even have enough room to receive it. I feel like that's where I am. Um, because if I were to go back to myself a year ago and say, oh, by the way, you're going to make more than Sean makes at the pharmacy as a chemist in seven months. Oh, and you're going to have this huge network that supports you and you're going to be meeting amazing people and you're going to be founding a women's real estate investing group and you're going to be hosting zooms and you're going to be hosting events and you're going to start speaking on stages and going on podcasts i would have laughed in her face and said that's not me and the thing is cassie i don't think it was it wasn't me mm. but it's through the trial and through the growth and through getting through it you're not the same person because you can't be because every bit of pressure, every trial you go through changes something about you. Mm -hmm. And I firmly believe when people say, you know, oh, well, I can't get through it. What if I don't, I can, you know, I can't persevere. Perseverance is hard. You have a hundred percent chance. Cause guess what? If you're still here on this earth right now, you have gotten through every single thing that's been thrown at you mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. So you can get through the next one. Yep. And it will be hard. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but mm -hmm. you can get through it and you'll come out the other side. And I also think the most beautiful times in our lives and the biggest blessings that we see are after the struggle. They're after the things that are hard because the contrast and also just being able to say, not only did I go through it, but here's who I am now. Hello, and thank you everyone for joining us today. On today's podcast, we have Karen Klump, and she's going to go through her story, and we're going to learn so much more. Karen, thank you. Welcome, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Now, I want to dive in, and I want you to start at the beginning of this journey. I know we had a great conversation about it, but I want you to just start from the beginning. Okay. So my entrepreneurial journey started very different than most people's because I never intended to be an entrepreneur. I never intended to have a business or a company, but my husband at the end of 2020 was disabled after getting a severe case of, well, a light case of COVID that then the side effects turned out to be pretty crippling. He's um, bedridden about 80% of the time or laying down. And so after about six months of doctors and specialists in treatment, we came to the conclusion no one knew what it was. And while we kept on with treatments, we started thinking that we have to look at other options. And what those other options turned out to be was kind of a latent um, desire to do real estate at some point when we were gonna, you know, slow down, our kids got older. And I just figured out through a lot of soul searching, a lot of prayer, and just looking at my options that real estate full time is going to be what I'm going to do. So we sold a brand new custom home we had built in 2019. We have six young kids and we moved everyone across the country about a year ago. I went into real estate full time and we are getting more treatments here for my husband. There's a lot more doctors and options. And I have made in the last seven months alone enough money that it not only covers what my husband was being paid yearly, but an excess of about $15,000. So what I'm doing specifically is I'm helping people who want to invest in real estate but don't have time to figure out what that means or how to do it or what is a good deal or what questions to ask. And I match them with investors so that they can be private money lenders and the investors can scale their business and everyone can get what they need, um, be secured and protected through assets, real brick and mortar as 
opposed to you invest in Bitcoin or you invest in the stock market. It goes down out of luck. Right. Yeah. So wow. that's where we are now. And, you know, when we first spoke and you told me everything that you're doing, I mean, there's a lot of resilience there, right? How did you decide or make that decision or to, to go into that specific field? Um, it almost really wasn't a decision. It was a lot of people around me just said, you're really great at communication. And they, people tell me their secrets. I do not ask. I have women in Walmart who will tell me their full history of medical gynecological. They just tell me. And so I had a lot of mentors who just said, you should look at, you know, putting people together because you understand their needs. You understand what they're looking for. And because you're so relationship based, which I really am, that's kind of, I would say it's, it's a double edged sword because all of my investors are my friends and all of my friends are my investors. Um, but I want everyone to be able to have the money for their retirement or their kid's college fund or their savings or in this economy, their house payment. I wanted everyone to do that. And because I'm good at building that relationship and showing them that they can trust me and showing them how I build my process and stick to my process to keep them safe. Um, it just was something I thought I'd try. And I'm really good at it. So, and I really enjoy it, which is silly because I was the girl in middle school where it's like remedial math. And now I'm the finance side of, of real estate investing. That's awesome. That's awesome. And has it given you more time, more flexibility? Um, I think, I think the first couple of years of any business, there's flexibility, but I, I don't think there's more time. Um, not for me specifically, because when you're working with other entrepreneurs, they need you, you are on. It doesn't matter if it's like, oh, but the kids get home. I try and I try really hard to have my schedule be, you know, that I'm done with work by the time my youngest kids get off the bus. But there are always exceptions. And I don't think that there is an actual balance. I know people talk about work-life balance. I don't think that's a thing. I think that it is like a seesaw where there are some times where I have a week, I'm way more focused on my kids because things are lighter at work. And then the next week, it's going to go completely opposite. And maybe in the long term, it balances out. But I think the whole balance work-life, I think it's a myth. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, later on, but I'm still, you know, I'm still in the first couple of years. And at this point for me, I'm just like, I have, I have eight people to feed and to house. And, and I have a husband who, for no reason I can understand, they will not um, approve him for disability because the government will not say that long COVID is a disability, which mm -hmm. I think is garbage. But, um, I have to hustle. Mm -hmm. I have to do. I don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. And I'm just lucky that I get to choose amazing people to work with and that I get to do things that I really enjoy and that I get to help people. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm happy you're on that you can share this journey and story with others. Now, let me ask you, how difficult was it leaving from a place you've always known? And coming somewhere new and starting a business in a new place, new space, new people. I okay. I I will say, if it just would have been me, it would have been really. It would have been harder. There was a lot of prayer, and um, a knowing from God that. Mm -hmm if you have the faith to take this path, this, I can do this. And so for me and my belief in Christ is that if he gives me the opportunity and he gives me the guidance, all I have to do is take the action and do it. I trust him far more than I trust myself. Wow. Wow. And how long did he speak to you before you said, okay, fine, I'm going to make the move. Or were you like, no, let me, let me think about this. Um, 
I, I had heard about, about the time we were a year in, so the end of 2021, we saw the housing market had gone up and, but we had only been in our house, you know, a year and a half. And so it's like, well, I'm not going to be able to get money out of that. I have to have a way to feed my family. And as the market went up, I also started finding um, research on neurological disabilities. And my husband's disability is what they think the COVID virus ate the like sheaths around the nerves in his brainstem. And so it causes instability. He, he can't walk for more than a few feet at a time without something holding him up. And it's ruined his long-term, or not long-term, short-term memory, um, sense of time. He feels like he's in a dream state. So I started seeing studies on that um, being much better at sea level. And where we were at in northern Utah is like over 10,000 square feet or 10,000 feet above sea level. And now we're north of Tampa, which is like 260 feet above sea level. So a huge, huge difference. And I read studies on that. So I brought him here uh, the end of 2022 just to see. Because being in a car makes him so sick. And I thought this plane ride is either going to kill him or it'll be good. And from the moment he walked off the plane, it was instantly about 10 to 15% better. Wow. And for someone who's been sleeping 18 to 20 hours a day and not able to go up and down stairs or get in and out of the shower by himself, 10 to 15% is huge. Mm -hmm. So it was at that point where I started looking at, okay, we have, this is a great indicator. We have um, the house that's appreciated really, really well because of choices we made and the market. Could we do this? And I started praying about it and it was very much a yes from the Lord. It was very much a, you are crazy from everyone around me. Oh, I had someone say to me in my family, what happens when you fail? Ooh. And you know, I don't think they realized it at the time. Maybe they did. I'll have to ask. But since they're my family member and they know me, I wonder if they said that just to make me push harder because I am that person. If you're, you're going to fail, I'm like, oh, I'm going to push so much harder. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. And say so that he did it to light a fire. And say that he did it to light a fire. Right. Um, but no one was for it. No one was for it. But my husband fully supported me and said, you know, if you're willing to do this, I'm, I fully believe you're capable of doing this. So we sold our house, moved all eight of us across the country, found a rental here and just, you know, zero to a hundred real quick. Wow. Wow. And were you working at the time that you transitioned or, or no? No, because I can't. So my kids, when my husband got sick, were 11, 9, 7, and then 5-year-old triplets. So wow. I couldn't just leave. <laughs> and if I would have gotten a job, it wouldn't have paid enough to pay for childcare. Right. And then when my husband was ill, um, because of his disability, he's fallen and ended up in the emergency room, but he doesn't know until he falls that he's even moving. So I couldn't just leave for right. eight hours. So I was at home and just trying to keep on top of everything, you know, trying to get state assistant, government assistance, um, doing any kind of extra side jobs I could. And yeah, just trying to figure out what our next steps would be. And even though you're working more, what is that mental state between where you were then and where you are now? When, when I was still there and thinking, this is the plan, I believed it would be okay. Um, where I am now is kind of just like, you know, in the Bible where it says, if you ask and do things in faith, I will give you so much. You can't even have enough room to receive it. I feel like that's where I am. Um, because if I were to go back to myself a year ago and say, oh, by the way, 
you're going to make more than Sean makes at the pharmacy as a chemist in seven months. Oh, and you're going to have this huge network that supports you. And you're going to be meeting amazing people and you're going to be founding a women's real estate investing group and you're going to be hosting zooms and you're going to be hosting events and you're going to start speaking on stages and going on podcasts. I would have laughed in her face and said, that's not me. And the thing is, Cassie, I don't think it was, it wasn't me, Mm. but it's through the trial and through the growth and through getting through it. You're not the same person. Because you can't be, because every bit of pressure, every trial you go through changes something about you. Mm-hmm. And I firmly believe when people say, you know, oh, well, I can't get through it. What if I don't? I can, you know, I can't persevere. Perseverance is hard. You have a hundred percent chance. Because guess what? If you're still here on this earth right now, you have gotten through every single thing that's been thrown at you mm-hmm. every time. Mm-hmm. So you can get through the next one yep. and it will be hard. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but you can get through it and you'll come out the other side. And I also think the most beautiful times in our lives and the biggest blessings that we see are after the struggle. They're after the things that are hard because the contrast and also just being able to say, not only did I go through it, but here's who I am now. hmm And I think we can look back and see things where God was guiding us or our intuition was guiding us or our discernment was guiding us. And for instance, I grew up with a dad who has been legally blind his entire life and is now completely blind. I never would have said that was a blessing. I'm so glad I got to grow up with that. But there are things with my husband's disability that most people find like very hard to accept. Like, how do you deal with, he can't drive. And for me, my dad never drove. It does not phase me at all. I thought it was weird when I got married and my husband wanted to drive my car. Like that's my car. (laughs) Mom drives always mom drives. And so there's a lot of things like that, that are actually a blessing just because I didn't know any different. And so now for me, it's not as hard as if I would have grown up in a different way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So everything that you went through basically leads you to where you are now. 100%. And who do you see yourself or where do you see yourself in the next two to three years? That version of you. Wow. I have goals, but I also think it's one of those things where I can't dream big enough for that. Mm. I can't dream as big as God can give. Let's say that I can't dream that big. I went to this really amazing event the other night with a bunch of um, the Buccaneers and the head coach for the Buccaneers. And I'm meeting all these people. And I just sat back. I'm like, this is silly. Because who would have thought I'm going to an event in a couple weeks with um, with rfk and tucker carl and all these big people oh do you want a vip ticket oh do you want a meet and greet sure yeah Uh uh-huh but what i really want to do is i want to be able to help other people like my husband who have been disabled after covid get more visibility so that they get the help they need we have people most of them frontline workers who were disabled by covid that aren't getting any assistance. I wanna help them get more visibility and more assistance from the government. Mm -hmm. I also want to speak on more stages about resilience and about perseverance and about becoming that new version of yourself because it's so critical to know who you are and to recognize that everything you're doing, you have a choice to take the easy or to take the hard. Things are gonna happen either way. But it's how we react to it. Are we growing or are we shrinking? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get to the end of my life and say, oh, it really would have been awesome if dot, Mm -hmm. dot, dot. I want to get to the end and be like, wow, that was rough at points, but also really, really great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. and I don't, I agree. I don't I think you're ever going to get to the end and say, I really wish I would have worked more. Or uh, I really wish I would have, you know, finished that series on Netflix. Mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> but we spend so much of our time doing these things that are, oh, it must be done. It must be done. It's so important. It's not. Mm -hmm. And if you knew that you had, I heard a quote the other day, it said, if you had one year left, what would you be doing today? And would it be as important as you think it is? Mm -hmm. And the crazy truth is that we spend a lot of time thinking that we have a lot of time. Yeah. And things change so fast. Well, even this last week's hurricane, mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. are people who have lost everything. There are people who have lost their lives. I guarantee you not one of them thought, oh, I'm just going to hang back an extra 10 minutes and get a few things from my garage and then didn't make it out. Not one of them thought, I'll probably die in this hurricane. They thought, mm -hmm. I'm just going to get some extra stuff. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. That would be me. I would be that person who's like, I've got a few minutes. It's okay. It's okay. I'm being careful. It's okay. Mm -hmm. But it's not promised. Mm -hmm. We don't know. And if it was all gone tomorrow, would we be proud of the effort we put in? Would we be proud of the person we became? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the measurement. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I love that you you say all this and, and you're using that as your measurement. What advice would you give to you know, like um, entrepreneurs that are going through something difficult, that are running a business and having to take care of someone that, you know, it, you know, they're going through a similar situation like yours. What advice would you give to them? You're doing better than you think. A lot of it is just showing up and being consistent. Entrepreneurship, um, I think is a bit of a myth where everyone should be an entrepreneur. No, mm. no. Mm -hmm. I would say maybe 10% of people should be entrepreneurs because they, I thrive on the, on the different and the challenge. I, I love that. Mm -hmm. My husband hates it. And most people do. It's mm -hmm. much, it's feels much more secure to be like, they're going to pay me this much. This is what is expected. This happens. Mm -hmm. That is a lot more comfortable for most people. Oh, yeah. Be that person. Mm -hmm. Like live your best life in that role because that is your jam. I am a terrible employee. I got fired from so many jobs because I was not, a, okay, I was not like a bad employee. But I was the person who would say to the manager, this is really good. What if we did this? Mm. Oh, and ideas. They, yeah. And then the owner would come to me and be like, I really like you, but the manager really doesn't like you because they think they're going to take their job, your job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, do you want to give me their job? <laughs> but, you know, I was in high school or college, so I couldn't, I couldn't take their job. But, but I was that person who was like, this is good. How can we make it better? This is mm -hmm. fast. How can we make it faster? And so corporations don't love that. <laughs> uh -huh. they, don't, they don't typically love that. But when I'm working for myself, okay, I can have this many meetings, but what if I condense them a little bit more? What if like the first few months of my business, every time I had someone who wanted to talk about my process and how do I become a private money lender? What does that look like? How do you secure it? I was spending an hour, a phone call, just going over it. And then about two months ago, I decided I am just saying the same thing over and over and over. So I wrote a script and I'm shooting a video so that when people say, I want to know about your process and I want to hear a little about your story. Fantastic. So if you go to my YouTube channel or you go to my website, there's an intro video and then there's a my PML process video. Watch those. And then we can book a 20 minute call. So what was a 90 minute is now a 20 minute, mm -hmm. but I'm not giving up any of the personalization. I'm not giving up any of the relationship. I'm just able to condense my part of it. So they still get all the knowledge. They get all the security, all the protections, and they get to know about me. But by the time we get together, I can just focus on them mm -hmm. and on their goals 
and what they want. And we can build a relationship from there. Cause there are, I have had one or two who are just like, nope, this is scary. So before it would have been like, well, that was two hours. Right. It was two hours. And now it's like, oh, they learned about what it was. It's not for them. I didn't waste any of my time. Mm -hmm. on someone who did not want to do this. Mm -hmm. And you get to streamline your process too and, and connect with the people that you genuinely connect with. Yeah. And build a relationship instead of this is my process. This is the this. It's like, mm -hmm. I, like I said, I was doing that five, six times a day. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't build the relationship. That doesn't build the trust. Mm -hmm. And fundamentally, that's what I want. That's why people work with me is because my process and what I've put together does build trust, but they also want to know the person. Right. Like right. It's one of the key factors, I think, when I talk to people about why I'm so strict in my process, whether they are an investor wanting to lend money or borrow money, is my personal money is what I have. I don't have a backup. I don't have a husband who makes 200000 a year over here. I don't have a trust fund feeding my kids. It is me. So when I have to decide where to invest my money, it is critical mm -hmm. that I weigh out everything, the background, the portfolio of the investor, what their collateral is, how they're securing it. I have to look at that so carefully because there is risk. There's risk in anything. But if mm -hmm. I can mitigate that risk for my money and my investor's money, then we're all going to win. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about, well, this is a good deal. It doesn't matter about the deal. It matters more so that they see that it comes to fruition. I fulfilled my promise to them of this is what I'm going to do to make this as good for you as possible. And then they come back and they grow their wealth. And, you know, five years from now, instead of having half a million for retirement, they have 1.3. Mm-hmm which is the minimum of what you need right now to retire. Oh, and it's only going to get worse. Oh, it's supposed to be 1.7 in the next three years with inflation where it's at. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what about all those people? And I would encourage, there is a, uh, there's all these people who have the 401ks. There is a documentary on PBS called The Retirement Gamble. And it talks about how, <laughs> it almost makes you sick to say it, the percentages that the company who facilitates your 401k, their fees, their percentages, how those compound. And this journalist goes to John Vanguard, who, you know, started Vanguard and says, from my calculations, it looks like you guys are taking almost 50% of someone's 401k. And he goes, that's not true. It's 66. Wow. Wow. So if you're 40 years working your career, you've put in a million dollars, by the time you retire, you have around $330,000. And at that point, most people are late 60s, early 70s. They can't go get another job, mm -hmm. which is why you then see these sweet, poor men and women in their 70s and 80s greeting at Walmart. Mm -hmm. It's not because they want to. Mm -hmm. It's because they believed what was being told to them. This is secure. This is backed by, this is FDIC insured. You know, everyone invest in the stock market. The only reason we do it is because that's what everyone else does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not I, safer. No, but here's the thing. A lot of people don't know about different avenues or, or even things that you do. Right. They're not aware that there are people that actually do these things. I told, I was telling, um, I was telling my dad, I said, so you're making 2.75% on an annuity. I can get you 15% a year minimum. Mm -hmm. And he goes, that sounds like witchcraft. Like, I've never <laughs> heard. I said, yeah, it's not witchcraft. But when you have, when you have all these things set up in our systems saying 5% and you'd be so grateful for it. You make mm -hmm. five whole percent. Meanwhile, the bank who's paying you like in your annuity, 2.65, dad, they're paying you 2.65. Guess what they're doing? They're loaning your money and money real estate. Mm -hmm. And they're making 20 
and they're paying you your 2.65 and you're so grateful because look at them giving you money. Mm -hmm. Cut out the bank, be the bank, 15%, 18% a year. Mm -hmm. Or you can keep going with your little stock market. That's totally fine. That mm -hmm. makes you feel happy. But with real estate, you also have the ability to have collateral. Right. Where it's like, worst case scenario, you now own a house. I loaned on one last year. It was a fix and flip in Tampa. I don't need a little house in Tampa, but guess what? That sucker is making $2,800 a month in rent. So if they could not have sold it, they would mm -hmm. have rented it and all oh, the collateral would have been mine, which means I don't get my 43,000 back that I use to fund the rehab, but I would have a little house in Tampa that I'm making $2,800 a month on. Mm -hmm. Sure thing. Mm -hmm. And then how are you seeing that market, rental market and real estate market right now? Is it the same kind of returns for investors? I know there's two parts to that question. <laughs> so that is the nice thing about um, private money lending is it doesn't matter what the market's doing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what rent it does because you're able to go when I have an investor come to me and say, I want to borrow this for this. Okay. You tell me your market. I want three exit strategies, which for people who are listening, an exit strategy is how are they going to give you your money, money back? They may sell it. They can refinance and pay you out of there. They may turn it into a rental. I need minimum of three of those. I don't care what you do with it. Get me back my money. It's none of my business. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I want to pay my investor back. I want to pay my private money lender back. So you do whatever you want with it. But then I also make sure like I have a PI on my team. She runs a background check to see if it's like maybe the deal looks really good, but he's had four bankruptcies. I know that before I lend with him. I don't lend with him. Or maybe it's his first project. I'm not lending with him. Mm -hmm. And so it is this process and procedure that I've curated and kind of gone to a few different mentorships that I've joined or or kind of gotten education in and just picked the best parts where it's like, ooh, this makes me feel secure. That does not. This is what I like. Ooh, this is my thing. And then I put it together so that when I lend on something or I bring a private money lender into it, I don't care what the Fed does. I don't care what the market does. It does not affect me. You show me that you can be trusted and give me verifiable information mm -hmm. and I'll let with you. Oh, I love that. And I love the fact that you said that you got mentorship and you took that mentorship. And can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, do you value getting mentorship? Would you advise people to get mentorship? I, I think any education is good education. Mm, okay. I think that when you are looking for a mentorship, make sure it's something you're actually interested in. A lot of people are just like, I'm going to do a real estate mentorship. You know, there's, there's one that I went to their conference and it's on um, buying multifamilies. Mm -hmm. That's what I learned in two days for a hundred bucks. I don't want to buy multifamily. It's not my jam. Mm -hmm. Aren't I glad I didn't spend $15,000. So look in what you want to do. There's so much free content on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Find your place. And even if it's just, I want to invest in it, but I want to be the silent person who just gives them the money and makes my returns. That's, that's a person in real estate. There is that person. Mm -hmm. But guess what? These people who have millions of dollars who also own real estate, they don't operate that real estate. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. lend their money out. Now they mm -hmm. say, I have millions in real estate. They do. They don't operate it. They don't manage it. They're using it to offset their taxes mm -hmm. or to get in passive income. But I will say passive income is a lie. Oh, yeah. Okay. In, in this in this way, you are either going to work it like mm -hmm. I do, or you're going to pay someone to work it like me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you invest with me, you're passive. I am not. Right. 
because I'm sending you updates because I'm vetting investors because mm -hmm. I'm looking and paperwork and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. So the whole set it and forget it is not an actual thing mm -hmm. unless you work with someone like me who says, and now here's the steps because I want to educate my lenders enough to know what questions to ask. Because mm -hmm. most new people, new people, they don't know what to ask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I actually have on my website, here's a hundred questions, most asked. And a lot of people will say, oh, I didn't even think to ask that. No, you shouldn't have to, because this is not your thing. Right. I have a lender I met at the gym. So sweet. He worked for um, AT&T for like 45 years, climbed the poles. Wow. And so now, where is what is his 401k worth? about 400,000. He worked for almost 50 years. Wow. He thought he had 1.4. So is he lending with me and making 16%? Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then, because... and then I, I do my work. I get him in things that he likes and I'm able to go to him and say, I have this opportunity or this opportunity. Mm -hmm. This one pays a little bit more. This one has a little higher risk. This does this, this does this. Which do you like? Both, neither, one, you choose. Mm -hmm. Because it's not up to me. I don't get paid by them. Mm -hmm. They don't pay me. So I don't get money when you lend on a certain thing. Mm -hmm. And you don't pay me. The borrowers who want money, they pay for my services. Mm -hmm. So my fee never comes out of, oh, if I say, I can get you 18% a year. That's not like, oh, minus my da, 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 da. No, that's your fee. That's your money. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. You know, when you think about it, there are so many people that either have 401ks or are in the service industry that don't have 401ks and they've used other vehicles to put money in, you know, tradesmen, you know, they're not working for big companies, right. you know, they save the little money thinking that it's going to help them come retirement and then retirement hits. And as, as an entrepreneur, when retirement hits, that's a scary concept, right? Oh, or yeah. anything happens, you know, because you have no backup. So this is a, a an amazing vehicle for people, you know. And like you said, most people just don't even know that it's out there. No, they don't. And once they find out, most people are kind of scared. Right, right, right. Until you contrast, and that's why I think it's a great contrast, I don't know about you, but I lost $30,000 in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I didn't buy Bitcoin. My husband accidentally bought something in like 2010 that required Bitcoin. So we had one and a half Bitcoin left and it like skyrocketed up to 60 something thousand dollars. Two weeks later, it was down at like 25. Mm -hmm. And there's no recourse. Right. Same with the stock market. How many people... We had a crash just a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. It went down by like 40% overnight. Mm -hmm. Now you can stay in it and ride it out. Right. And right. it will, it will, you know, bounce back and forth. But there's no guarantee. Mm -hmm. There's and no guarantee you have to sit in there. any of it. Mm -hmm. And that's what people don't realize. They just are used to doing that. That's just what we've been told we do. Mm -hmm. So they don't even consider the risk until they lose money. And then everyone's shocked. That they mm -hmm. lost money. Yeah, it's the stock market. You have no control. Of mm -hmm. course you lost money. Of course, it's Bitcoin. You have no control. <laughs> Which is another reason I like real estate. I can control it. And a lot of the borrowers that I work with, I'm like, when this goes through, here's what I want from you. I want a small part of equity in this. So that Ooh. I'm getting a small paycheck. And it also, this is, this is the reason I develop my process this way. If I am just raising capital mm -hmm. for them and finding them lenders, what's to keep them from not finishing on time or not yeah. selling when they said, what's, I don't have any control mm -hmm. unless I am a capital partner and have an equity stake in that into which I can go to my borrower and be like, we are not doing anything else because I'm a partner in this now. Mm hmm and if you fund another three deals or you want me to lend on that, I'm not doing anything until we have a firm deadline for paying back these lenders. Mm -hmm. You don't have the control to do that. 
If you're just, if you're just raising capital or just connecting people, mm -hmm. it's a huge amount of responsibility that I take very, very seriously because this is people's retirement. This is their kid's college fund. This is what they use to pay their bills mm -hmm. and, and to grow their wealth. Mm -hmm. This is, they're creating hopefully generational wealth where it's just like, just let it roll, let it roll over and over and over. Mm -hmm. But to be able to put them in something where I can then say, oh, if, if this operator, if he can't operate at the level he says he can, I can step in mm -hmm. and fix it to the best of my ability. And I may not be the smartest. I may not be the youngest. I may not be the prettiest. I may not be on any of the things, but I am good at getting things done. I, I have six kids and, a business <laughs> and triplets and a disabled husband. Like I'm doing all the things all the time and I'm still making money and making money for my lenders. I can get it done. But I like having that piece of control because then I get to speak in behalf of my lenders. Mm -hmm. What is best for them? I want what's best for the project. But if for any reason something goes wrong, someone doesn't show up, I get to be the first one they turn to to help fix it. Right. Which I would prefer any day as opposed to, oh, it went long and I can't tell you why. Mm -hmm. no, 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 you will tell me why and we will fix it. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And I love that you're in this space because there needs to be more people like you in this space doing the thing, right? All the things. All the things. <laughs> All the things. All the things. All the things. Wow. Okay. How do people get in touch with you? So if anyone's listening and they want to get in touch with Carrie Ann, what is the best way? Um, I am on Instagram, Carrie Ann Klomp, just like my name. Um, DM there is easiest. Mm -hmm. Or I do have my website, which is cherryfoxcapital.com. People can go there, subscribe to my newsletter, see what I'm funding, or just email me directly from my website. Wow. And how are you keeping up with the emails, the the clients, like what mm -hmm. system and strategy are you using and kids and husband and the things? Um, I I have a very strict morning routine. I have a very strict daily routine. Oh. And um my my girls make fun of me. But then they're also like, can I have a morning routine? Like, what do you do next? Because I am just that person. Once I find something that works for me, I can I can do the same thing every day. I can eat the same thing every day. I do not care. Once I know it works, I'm like, I'm good. So I have a good CRM. I use um I use Monday.com to keep everything together. I also have a virtual assistant. I'm looking at hiring another one to help me where it's like, this is stuff that doesn't need to be done today. This is stuff that does need to be done today. And this is just on the back burner. And then, you know, planning meetings. So I'm, um, I'm one of the founders of the Trailblazers real estate investment group for women. We have weekly calls, we have weekly Zooms, we have planning meetings and Strong calendar is what we'll say. Strong calendar and a strong CRM. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, okay. So, so what does a morning in, in like a typical morning look like for you? Okay. 4.30, wake up. I do allow myself a 10 minute snooze. I know Mel Robbins says, do not snooze. I snooze. But I like kind of just, I need a few minutes to just wake up and I usually have a song come into my head or um, just kind of like, okay, I like to start with just kind of positive affirmations of like, hey, we're good. We're, today's going to be amazing. Um, then it is put on my loungy clothes and I pray. I drink a full bottle of like 32 ounces of cold water. I take my son um, in our church. Our teenagers go to early morning seminary. So I take him at 515. He goes there. While he's there, I read my scriptures. I do journaling. I read 30 minutes of self-development. Um, and then, geez, then what? Then my kids are up. I get them ready for school. <laughs> and then once they're off, 
then I actually do like a 15 minute um, meditation just to kind of get everything right. I go to the gym, I come home, quick shower, get ready, meetings. And then, yeah, I mean. Wow, and that's just the first shift. <laughs> that's, that not is, even yeah, that's, that's from 4.30 <laughs> to about, that's just the first, yeah, eight hours of my day. Wow. Wow. And what are some good book recommendations that you can see for mindset? Ooh, so many. Um, I just figured, or I just read it's everything is figure outable by Marie Forleo. So good. Um, I just read one called it takes what it takes by Trevor Mawad. He is a sports psychologist. So I will say amazing book. Wow. I would probably have loved it more if I knew sports. Because there's sports references and I'm like, I don't know what that is. Oh, I appreciate the sentiment. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Different kinds of passes and stuff. I'm like, I'm just not that girl. Um, the Power of One More, Ed Milet, is amazing. Mm. Um, and The Charge by Brendan Burchard. Oh, and if you had to rate them in order. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to say for inspiration and motivation, power of one more has, has to top it. For actionable steps, then everything is figure outable and the charge come in at tide. I love taking notes. I am mm -hmm. a note taker. I have like post-its and tabs all through my books because I want to incorporate what I read. Um, and the only reason it takes what it takes comes in last is because it's more focused on instead of this whole idea of positive thinking, which he states that if you take someone who's in a negative space and you just say like, think positive, they can't do that. Right. So he talks about getting from not to, to take this huge jump, but how can we get from a negative space to just a neutral space? How can we take out the negative that is pulling us down, pulling us back, holding us tethered to negative, hard things and just make it neutral? How do we get there? Because if we're neutral, then we can start incorporating those things that make us excited, that make us grow, that make us better. But you can't just go from one end to the other and mm -hmm. expect that that's not that it's going to work. It's not. And so it's it's just a more targeted idea, mm -hmm. but loved it. Great book. Great book. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I love it. And you said something interesting that you take notes and you have all these notes in the book and you try to incorporate it. Yeah. How do you go from, okay, so a lot of us read books, we all take notes, we highlight taking all of that and actually incorporating it. Do you incorporate it daily or what do you do? What are some Depending on the book, so in Marie Forleo's book, she has you write your top 10 goals daily. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm already writing in my journal. Right. So I'm going to write that. Or um, on, in It Takes What It Takes, he talks about having things that inspire you where you see them. So I have post-its on my mirror in my bathroom. Same with um, in The Charge, Brenda Burchard, he says, you know, how do you want to show up? Write three things. How do you want to show up for others? And how do you want to show up for yourself? And I have those like on my phone as my screensaver. So it's like, how do you want to show up? I want to be, um, for instance, engaging, savvy, and confident. Mm -hmm. So then every time I go to my phone, my screensaver would say engaging, savvy, confident. Oh, we love that. So... And it's just a wasted space. How often, how many times a day are you looking at this? And yeah. if every time it says something like, you're amazing, show up this way, this way, and this way, mm -hmm. it's much harder to be like, I'm a loser. Things aren't great. And it's much easier to be like, you know what? It passes. We all have hard days. It doesn't mean that we don't. Right. We're all right. going to have those days. I still have those days where I'm just like, what am I doing with my life? I moved my kids across the country. They don't have cousins or grandparents or friends or anyone. 
I don't even know where I'm at. I moved to a city where there's a lot of like clothing optional places for older senior citizens. Did not know. What did I do? <laughs> and that's okay. And it's normal. Mm -hmm. It's normal to say today is a tough day or today I am off. But if you put these little things into place to just remind you and mm -hmm. also just be grateful. Ooh, yeah. Gratitude. Just mm -hmm. be grateful. Mm -hmm. And don't ever assume that just because things are hard for you that you wouldn't trade. Because I don't think you would. If someone said to me, okay, all these things, what if we take this away and your husband's better and you live back in Utah, which I wouldn't, um, just because there's too many cool things happening here. But what if we take away all your trials and we'll give you these, which are a mom with dementia and a child with cancer? No, I don't want those. Mm -hmm. I'll take mine. Realize that you have yours because you can handle them. Oh, I love that. I love that. I think I think that God gives us, when people say he won't give us more than we can handle, that is totally untrue. Mm -hmm. He gives us things that we can't handle all the time. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't give us things he can't handle. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. Can you please restate that? Wow. Now, he will give us things that we cannot handle. He will never give us something that he cannot handle. Oh, I love that. I, I literally felt that down to my soul. Like I felt that one. You but are it's so true, right? right? You are so right. You are so right. And if he wants us to turn to him, which he does, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you something you can't handle. I can handle. And I, and I think, especially in my case, with this move and everything, it was, I see so much potential in you. And Carrie Ann, I love that you're a mom. I love that you're supporting your husband. I love that you're doing all of this. But what if you could inspire or help or serve all these other people? Mm -hmm. But uh-oh, they're across the country. I need you across the country and I need you motivated to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I need you to turn to me with more intention. So things are going to happen. Not that yeah. he gives us those trials, but that he allows them because we live in the world. Right. The world can suck. It's, it's just what it is. Right. But it gave me the motivation to say, I can do more. Mm-hmm. And when you are challenged to do more, you're given a choice. And all you have to do, and it says that in Trevor Moad's book, and it takes what it takes, all you have to focus on, and if all you focus on is taking the next best step and making the next best choice, mm -hmm. you will. Yeah, yeah. Focus on your next choice and how you want that to happen and how you're going to show up you will make the best choice. Of course. And sometimes you're for forced to step into your purpose, right? So yeah. in your case, you are forced to step into your purpose. Yeah. You know, you couldn't ignore it. You couldn't, you had no choice but to do what it was. And it's funny, you know, you spoke about in the beginning of your story that, you know, you were this person in school and, and you were always asking people at, at work, like, what if we do this? But you never stepped into that purpose until you were forced to become that person. Right. Right. Wow. And now I wouldn't go back. Right. Even with all the trials, I see so much ahead of me. And I think if I even look at my growth the last year, that's why when you ask where you want to be two to three years from now, I'm like, oh, I don't even know. Because I have so many huge things on the horizon. Mm -hmm. And with God leading me and asking for his guidance and just saying, you lead me where you want me. Mm -hmm. Number one, there's a whole lot of peace in saying, I will give this to you. You just tell me where to show up. I can do that. But like, I don't want to be in charge. It's that whole, like, there's a country song. Take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't want to steer that car. I don't want to mm -hmm. because he knows where we're going. 
Absolutely. And so if I'm constantly trying to say, well, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. This is how you're going to get to be the person I know you can be. Mm -hmm. But you don't get there through never having any challenges. You don't get there by having everything go your way. You don't mm -hmm. get there by having everything given to you. We've met those people. Oh, yeah. They're not great. <laughs> They're not. No, it's true. It's so They're true. They're not great, which it's is why so we don't give our kids everything, which is why we make them share, which is why we give them rules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because Absolutely. like God, who is our father, we want them to be the best version of themselves. We can see it in them. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, I know you don't like going to class because it's busy work, honey. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I was that person. But this is something I need you to do so that you recognize that when you show up and the way that you said you were going to show up, you signed up for this class, mm -hmm. that when the next thing hits, you're like, okay, this is how I need to show up because I gave my word. I signed right. up. I said I would. This develops our character. We mm -hmm. do it as parents. God does it to us, to us as his children. And if we're willing to just say, I trust you. You take me to the opportunities. You guide me to the people. I will be the person because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I can't see it. And I think we sometimes get glimpses of it and it's almost kind of scary. Mm -hmm. It's it's that whole Spider-Man quote with great power comes great responsibility. Yep. Yep. But, and I heard someone flip this and I loved it. But with great responsibility comes great power. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, as we grow and as we become this new version of ourselves, there's a lot of responsibility because we're leading others. We're mm -hmm. influencing others. We're showing them the way because mm -hmm. of where we've traveled. Mm -hmm. And so there is a lot of responsibility in the power, but there is a lot of power in that responsibility mm -hmm. because as we take that and help them expand and grow, we have more power to do even greater things. No, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I tell people all the time, it's not where you are right now, right? Where you are right now, there's someone that's five steps behind you, right? And you have the ability to help them in this moment. Do it. Right. Share, you know? And um, no one is no one is more equipped to help the person you used to be ooh. than the person you are now. Absolutely. 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 And I was just talking to someone today about like taking your trauma, taking your story, because that version of you, that person is back there and they still need your help. They still need you to show up. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was speaking to, I, so I'm you know writing, I have a keynote that I've written and I'm speaking on a few stages this fall and winter. And I said, you know, this just, this is hard. Mm -hmm. Like, because my speaking coach said, I want you to go into how this whole thing affected you personally and emotionally. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it's like, oh, no, we don't open that door. Right. That is a sad place that is hard. Mm -hmm. And now we're on the other side more. So let's just stay in, in the happy part. But she said, carry on. Somewhere there is someone who was in that place that you were two years ago. And mm -hmm. it's selfish of you not to share how you got to the other side. Mm -hmm. Don't be selfish. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense to me. <laughs> but it doesn't make it, it doesn't make it easier. But when if you look at how this can lift someone else, correct. Because that's why I'm doing it. Like I, it's it's not going to be super awesome to get up on stage and be like, here's how I almost lost it. Mm -hmm. Cause there were moments where I'm in my closet sobbing against the wall for however long a bluey episode is mm. because where I was at, my husband's sick. Mm -hmm. My kids don't know what's happening. I can't break. I don't get to have bad days. Mm -hmm. So I am fine and I am happy and I'm going to make you some mac and cheese for lunch with bananas <laughs> and then you're going to watch Bluey and I'm going to go have a panic attack in my closet. And when Bluey is over, I will come downstairs and you will have no idea that it happened. Mm. 
And so talking about that is hard, Mm -hmm. but I do it for all those people who are still crying in their closet and thinking, how am I going to get through the next month? How am I going to get through the next year? How am I going to remake my life? Mm. Is it possible? It is possible. Mm-hmm. So I will tell my story on podcasts, on stages, mm-hmm. so that people can not only see that it's possible, but that you can get to the other side as this new person and you can be doing things and reaching for things that are beyond what you even comprehend. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. And I think back to the version of me sitting there trying to Google how to find help for this particular situation or how to find. And it wasn't there because I wasn't there. Right. Delivering that information. Yeah. And you weren't there delivering that information to you two years ago. So you know, everything that you've shared today has been so powerful, so meaningful. And I know that it's going to help so many people. You know, I believe that we have a purpose and I believe that, you know, our purpose is sometimes way beyond us. And I do believe that your purpose is way beyond you. Thank you. I think so. We'll see where it goes, right? <laughs> well, listen, you're already doing the thing. Big, big places. Big places. You're doing the thing. <laughs> You're already moving mountains. I mean, you know, you already have it set up. You're speaking on stages. You're getting out there. You're doing the podcast. That takes a lot of courage, you know, courage, time, commitment. It takes a lot to do it. I will do my own soon. Everyone keeps asking and I'm like, give me till January. (laughs) Don't worry. I'm sure that when you do it too, you're going to crush it. I just don't know how and where you're going to find the time, but I mean, if you have triplets, I'm sure you're going to find the time and do it. It, We will figure it out. (laughs) Right? We'll figure it out. Clearly. Always. I love having you on today. Thank Thank you you so much. If you could just leave something, a word of wisdom or something for our listeners, what would you leave and what would you say? I would say that you have greater potential than you will ever know. And you will ever see and that the only way to find it is to show up as your best self over and over oh love it love it karen thank you so much for coming on today i loved every moment of it i know they will too thank you thank you thank you for tuning into today's episode of entrepreneurial truth One tool that I can truly recommend on how you can organize and execute systems is Notion. Notion allows you to seamlessly get information out of your head and into a centralized, organized space. Whether it's documenting processes, managing projects, or brainstorming ideas, Notion can be your go-to platform. As a special offer to our listeners, you can get started with Notion using the link in the episode description. By using our affiliate link, you not only support our podcast, but also gain access to free templates designed to kickstart your journey with Notion. These templates are specifically crafted to help entrepreneurs streamline their workflows and boost productivity. To take advantage of this offer, simply visit the affiliate link below to sign up and explore the free templates available in the resource section. Whether you're a solopreneur, managing a team, Notion can be the game changer you've been looking for. Stay tuned for more episodes where we dive deep into strategies, tools that can empower you as an entrepreneur. And don't forget to subscribe to Entrepreneurial Truth so you never miss an episode filled with actionable advice and insights. Thank you once again for joining us today. Until next time, keep innovating and scaling your business with purpose. Thanks again.